They haunt you. These eyes. As intended. Eye to eye, you're supposed to regard the greatest and the tiniest, the lowliest, equally. If we can get down and look these species in the eye, really get down low and really look them in the eye, and you see how, how lovely they are and how much intelligence there is there. They're telling us something. I mean, they're, they're shouting it to me. For 10 years now, our friend, National Geographic photographer Joel Sartori, has made it his life's mission to be their messenger, and he hopes their protector, their Noah, building a photographic ark. This is the ark room, we call it. Uh, we have 5,002 species in here, wow. all rolling past. Uh, at this rate, it would take two hours to see them all. It's supposed to just overwhelm people with, with what life looks like on Earth. And what might soon be extinct. The very last, that's the very last of his kind, the Rab's fringe limb tree frog. His name's Tuffy because he's outlived the projections. He's like nine years old at least. So when he's gone, that's it. That that's one it. will be extinct, yep. Sartori's photo arc will be at the National Geographic Museum in Washington, D.C. until April. This is the northern white rhino that I photographed at Diver Krilave Zoo this summer in the Czech Republic. There were five at the time. There's a very old female named Nibire, and uh, she died one week to the day after we photographed her, and now there are four. This is the Columbia Basin pygmy rabbit. Um, that animal's gone extinct. She was very near it the end of her life. Extinct? Yes, yeah. You can see her from the other end of the, of the exhibit. We wanted people to be able to see her and to come into this room and have, have the experience of, well, this is what we're talking about. This is the consequence if we ignore the world around us, right here. This is the consequence of that. We lose thousands of species to extinction per day on this planet. Scientists um, over the past uh, 500, well, half a billion years, um, we've seen five mass extinctions. Um, you think of things like volcanoes and an asteroid hitting the Earth. Scientists currently describe the loss of plants and animals right now as the sixth mass extinction. Anthropologist Catherine Workman is senior director of National Geographic's Protecting Wildlife Initiative. We're losing animals at a rate a thousand times that of rates of extinction in the past, um, which is unparalleled. It's, it's an extinction that we haven't seen since the loss of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. We have habitat loss, we have hunting, we have climate change, and the, the combination of all these threats on a planet that's shortly going to have more than 7 billion people um, is really hammering the planet's uh, biodiversity. Joel Sartori didn't set out to create a photo arc. It began as an act of desperation when his wife Kathy was diagnosed with breast cancer and he needed to stay home in Lincoln, Nebraska. I just thought I need to shoot something. Kathy's gonna be sick for a long time and, and uh, on the days when she felt better through the chemo cycles, I just needed something to shoot. So this world traveler who shot 35 stories for National Geographic. That's what I came here for, right there including six covers, drove to the Lincoln Children's Zoo a mile from his house and asked if he could photograph the animals. They let me take a naked mole rat and put it on a white background. That's how we started it. And then I did a couple of uh, blue and black poison dart frogs, I think. And that was 5,400 species ago. They're very curious about our thing. <laughs> Sartori is not quite halfway through photographing all 12,000 animal species in captivity, endangered or not. He figures it will take him the rest of his life to finish. He's taken pictures at more than 200 zoos in the United States alone. The how-to part can be tricky. There he goes. You don't need to chase or anything. We're just standing here to, as living fences. Living fences. Wrangling flamingos. He's in the shadow since all the lights come straight back. Not quite like getting your ducks in a row. 
So now doesn't this look nice? Doesn't this look nice? Perfect. It's perfect for chimps. On the other hand, success is not always guaranteed. <laughs> not a bashful bird at all. Ow! Ooh, oh. crap! And there can be hazards. You've heard of angry birds? This is like a $6,000 camera. Doesn't you know that? Hey, 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 hey! This bird, the nastiest, most badass bird I've ever had to do. Got it, got it, got it, nice. Why zoo animals? Zoos often have the only populations of these animals. They're gone in the wild, and if it weren't for zoos, a lot of these species I shoot would be extinct by now, hands down. Sartori accepts that people fall in love with fuzzy, cute animals, like the fennec fox. These at the St. Louis Zoo. But he wants us to appreciate the importance of the uncuddly ones, the ones we've never heard of. And this is often the only voice they'll ever have before they go away. This is their only chance to sing, in a way. His animals have been projected on the Empire State Building and at the UN. Soon they'll be shown on the Vatican. This has gone extinct, and this. Anywhere he can, as often as he can, Joel Sartori pleads for their lives. This is the best time ever to be alive to save species because there's so many species that need our help. He hopes his photographs will get people to help, and he likes to hook them young. What grade are you guys in? Four. And you already know that tiger bones are sold as medicine? You know, I, I do take comfort in the fact that all is not lost by any means. In this country, whooping crane, black-footed ferret, California condor, Mexican gray wolf, all those animals got down to fewer than two dozen. And they're all stable now. Not in the best shape, but stable. And that just speaks volumes to the fact that people do care, but we have to let them know these animals exist and that they're in trouble and what the need is. The Ark is Joel Sartori's invitation to look them in the eye to look hard.